Welcome back. Now, it's been six months since the Nigerian government took the decision to close down the country's land borders with neighboring countries. And this was intended, of course, to curb uh, rampant smuggling as well as boost local production of food items, particularly rice. Many have thought the borders would have been reopened by now. And despite protestations and appeals from the country's neighbors, the borders still remain shut. President Buhari himself has appealed for patience, saying the issue will be determined by uh, a report now of a tripartite committee made up of Nigeria, Benin, and Niger Republic. Now, recently, the president of Burkina Faso, Rock Mark Ka Christian Kabore, who was appointed to lead a special ECOWAS panel to help resolve the issue of the border closure, was at the presidential villa in Abuja to meet with his Nigerian counterpart. Buhari told the Burkina Bay president that Nigeria's decision to partially close the border was purely to safeguard national security. Now, the closure of the borders has actually come with different concerns as it is against the very essence of the ECOWAS Treaty, which permits the free movement of people and goods across West Africa, as well as a signing of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. The border closure has also been blamed for the current hike in inflation in Nigeria, with analysts saying the situation is putting serious pressure, which is in turn putting pressure on the prices of food items. The Nigerian Customs have said the main objective of the border closure was to ensure that neighboring countries complied with the ECOWAS protocol on transit. Now, the protocol on transit mandated customs of neighboring countries to escort items coming to Nigeria through their borders so the importers would not evade payment of duties. Nigeria says her neighbors have been flagrantly flouting the protocol. Let's talk more about uh, the border closure now with someone who's quite vast on the issue. Senator Francis Fada Hussein now joins me from Abuja. Senator, thank you very much for joining You're me welcome. on the program. First, let's start. Will you say that the current border closure has actually achieved I its objective? What? Well, um, to some few individuals, it has achieved its object, object, but to Nigeria as a whole, it's a failure. It's just a negative uh, method applied at the wrong time. The, the reasons given for border closure were, one, smuggling of rice. Then, um, later, arms and ammunition. Those were the two reasons. But uh, Nigerian farmers on the agri sector, they were not ready. Uh, we were supposed to con consume 7.3 million uh, metric ton of rice. But we are producing only 3.2 million uh, metric tons. By the time we now uh, close the border, we, are, we were not ready to meet the, the demand of the consumers, of Nigerians. So the few farmers who were doing cosmetic farming, they were the people who advised the government that the, the smuggling of rice was uh, alarming. And government, because of that, closed the border. Now, the federal government has given conditions, saying that the borders will not be reopened uh, until ECOWAS countries actually respect the rule of uh, origin for imports. W would you agree uh, with that, with the submission of the federal government? Not that, that. The federal government meant uh, well for, for the nation. But what I'm telling you now is that we are not prepared to close border. Because before you close your door against smuggling, you must produce for your population. And even export. Who are exporting? The negative effect is that the, the rights you people close door against, they are here already. The exportation that we should have done to bring in foreign exchange to this country, the close border again, they were unable to allow them to go to Burkina Faso, this landlord country that really depends on what is being sold at Akwangba market. It really affected Nigeria through Lagos houses. If you look, go to Akwangba today, you that is dry. And before, you will see people from Burkina Faso, Ivory Coast, coming in to buy our products. 
Now, the African Union wants to investigate the closure of the border. Do you think Nigeria in any way violated bilateral protocol by closing its borders? Yes, we violated it because you have to contact them before you, before you close the border. It was an agreement. It was a mutual agreement between all West African countries, which Nigeria is a uh, signatory. By the time you close your borders against any other country, you will have informed them. What we needed then was small-scale industries. Unfortunately, we don't have enough to produce more for the nation. So that when we are self-sufficient, we cannot close the border. We don't want these things again. But now, what we don't want are now plenty in the market. So it's a negative attitude. And two, my own submission then was that it will, it will breed a lot of criminality. Crime will be on the increase. If you look at uh, the local Lagos, Asis, Castina, and so on, you see that the youth that cross the border, all our borders in the day, that's going in and coming, there are more than one million. Because there's no work. But because of one, one bag of rice being taken by these people, which we should have taken duty on it, you now close the border. And those boys now could not could not have anything to do again, and they must survive. That is why you see the crime that is in, on, in, on the increase. Kidnapping, harm robbery here and there. And I warned them, because I was in charge of border management for eight years, I warned them that if you close your borders against this youth, one, the, that you didn't provide for, now that they are sorting themselves out, you close borders against uh, Tokumbo cars. Tokumbo cars are all over Nigeria. How did they come in? That is another question. Well, we cannot deny the fact that Nigeria has many porous borders. What, what exactly do you think is the challenge of policing our borders? We are already in the dry season. There is no thing like borders in the north. What you are policing is just as popular as the Roko, uh, Badagri, and uh, the, uh, Baba Mutum, Ufum, and so on. You now have gone around. Those are the areas. But now that you, have, you are in the dry season, there's no border in the north. You can drive in anywhere at, across that uh, axis. So with little or nothing, we have about 15,000 officers. Out of almost about 10,000 are wearing uniforms. The remaining are support, uh, supporting staff. How can you use 10,000 officers or 15,000 officers to man that area? One, lack of, we have lack of uh, manpower is there. So there's no way, even if you line up the old soldiers in Nigeria and police, they can't mind the old place where there are no, where this, it is porous. When you are saying porous, but we can get that one in the north. But in the south here, it is manned. So anybody who is saying porous border in the south is wrong, except waters, uh, the, uh, the borders we have on waters. That one is, uh, is at the mercy of God. So that is the main problem now. We need a lot of officers to be recruited, not the 3,200 they want to recruit that can man. They cannot man the southwest alone. Now, Senator, you are one of those at the forefront of calling for reforms in Nigeria's custom service so that it can perform optimally. Uh, could you shed more light on the kind of reforms you're looking at, at bringing up? My own uh, argument is very simple. In the history of Nigeria since 1960, which reform has a military man done to Nigeria rather than damaging? We have already, since 1966, Although we are crawling as a democracy, but for them to come in, corruption every day, another one will take another one, corruption every time, this corruption still persists. The problem in that sector is that there is no military man that can rule custom, that we allow custom officers to contribute maximally to the uh, uh, the economy of the nation. The, the, the military man is to go and fight territorial integrity. But as soon as you are now bringing them to finance, as, as soon as you are bringing them to administration of 
our own uh, revenue, then automatically that place will die. Senator Francis Fadanosi, thank you very much for joining us on the program. You're welcome. Well, that's it on the program. If you want to watch it again, it's simple. Just go to our website, tv360nigeria.com. You'll find this program and lots more there. You can also follow the conversation on our various uh, social media handles. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.